You know who else is playing guillotine for the first time ever? Yep, that's right. Jeff Erickson, rotowire.com, your one-stop shop for all your fantasy sports. Jeff joins us from his office slash studio right now as uh, we get going here on the program. Nice t-shirt, by the way. I like it. Oh, thank you. I like the fact that you're supporting uh, Friedman. Very nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Pitcher Ninja with the reds colors. Yep. Yeah, figure, might as well do that. Why there not? I like that. Uh, how's your guillotine experience working out for you so far, Jeff? I'm surviving. It's survive in advance, right? Uh, right. And I, I squeaked by in week one. Uh, week two is our first week, actually, because okay. I'm in so many other leagues and so many other of us are. We're like, okay, let's start just start week two. Can't find a draft date otherwise. So got by like ninth place in week one. It's like 12th or 11th place in week two. Uh, but I swooped in this week and got uh, Nick Chubb for the rest, hopefully the rest of the season. Congratulations. Uh, you know, I, I, it's a big, imp- big improvement because I waited on my RB2 and it's been a big disaster so far. I had Devin Singletary in there. I mean, he was fine in week two. Last week he was a total dud. So now I've got someone a little bit better, hopefully. Uh, I think you're in pretty good shape. So, yep. I mean, and I had I had Chark and uh, Devontae Adams and, uh, you know, Chark had not been doing much this season. So then I picked up uh, DK Metcalf and man, it helps to have those three and now have uh, solid running backs across the board because of Montgomery for the, for the bears gave me nothing, but Mixon uh, gave me a nice week for the Bengals. And that really helped kind of solve things. And now all of a sudden I still have Moss and Connor as my third and fourth RBs. And Hey, who knows? That might be able to salvage things with them as well. It's going to be interesting once we hit bye weeks. If you stay alive, there are fewer people to compete with, but so much more important to get those guys. You know, I did spend a big, 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 big chunk of my fab budget. We still have $0 bids, but, you know, I'm going to lose on almost any bidding war the rest of the way. But I figured the way I looked at it, I have a definite need now, and it's a first-round player is the way I looked at it there. So half-point PPR, too. So a little bit more value in that format. You enjoying the guillotine so far since it's in its infancy with you? You you having a good time with it? Yeah, of course. Uh, the only thing is, it'll stink once I get knocked out. Except that's one less league to manage. So there you go. That's, well, I'll try to stay alive for at least more than a few weeks. So that way you have to worry. And then the only yeah. sad part is, is that when uh, you get to Chubb's bye week, then you got to really figure out what to do. Yeah, and then of course, if you do get really far in, there's like three, four teams left, and you're going to agonize on who you're going to prioritize in your pickups. Yeah. I think 100%. that's the other thing too. 100%. Um, there have been some fantasy studs through the first uh, few weeks of the season. And, uh, man, I talk about, you know, um, Adams and, and the Packers. They, they stunk it up the first week of the season against the Saints, and they've been really good the last couple of weeks. And suddenly Aaron Rodgers looks like Aaron Rodgers again. Devontae Adams looks like a stud. Uh, Aaron Jones is back on the right track and, you know, doing what they normally do, scoring fantasy points for their owners. Yeah, I think one of the takeaways is, hey, the Saints defense is better than we realized. Yeah, you know, week two aside, I mean, even then, I think it was the offense that caused most of the problems for the defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, that game got blown open late. Uh, but with, to the Packers, they had a bad trip to Tampa Bay in week three, I think it was last year, where they got smoked. You're fine the rest of the way. You know, it's tough sometimes going out of your element, playing a tough team. And then they had a much easier schedule the rest of the way. I was impressed, you know, because I thought the Niners were a better team, and they're not. Uh, the Packers were the better team all night long, even though they had to have that comeback late they were the best team for the most part of that game they were um although i mean i watched what kittle did on that last drive and then of course they give the ball to aaron Rodgers with 37 seconds left and no timeouts and you keep thinking to yourself well there's only there's very few quarterbacks on the planet that can do what he does and again just goes to show you why aaron Rodgers is such an elite qb yeah and why Devontae adams is such an elite route runner i mm-hmm. mean the whole the whole stadium knows they're going to Adams right and yet he still finds pockets in that zone twice on that drive uh that that's the part that's so impressive to me I know uh and again just uh, another win if you uh, have those Packer uh, players and by the way uh big if you're a Cowboys uh, fan right because the Cowboys were able to get it done as well and uh you're starting to see Dak put up great numbers Zeke looked good in uh, Monday night and of course everybody is exactly where they should be as well my big takeaway from that game is Maybe the Dallas defense is good. Is you know something we haven't said in a while. Uh, they're they're creating you know turnovers or they have a pretty decent pass rush. Even with Lawrence out, that's the thing that's pretty amazing. Diggs looks like the real deal. He looks so good. Micah Parsons looks so good. Uh, they've they've invested a lot of draft capital on defense finally, and you're starting to see that pay off. Carolina too. They, they play each other this week, and it's kind of a 
are you for real bull that that one and Denver facing uh, Baltimore, the two games I'm kind of watching to, you know, Caroline, Denver, both off to three and zero starts. How legit are they? We'll see now that the schedule is going to get a little harder. Anybody hotter out of the gate than uh, Mike Williams right now from the chargers. You know, Joe Lombardi, uh, their offensive coordinator used to be the offensive coordinator at the saints. He goes, we're going to put him in the uh, same position that we had Michael Thomas in. We're going to make Mike Williams that in a contract year, no less. The sign was there. It turns out that wasn't just talk. It actually has come to fruition. They're giving him, it's not just a deep guy. They're giving him lots of targets. I love seeing it. This is a guy who was a, a high first round pick. He's seen that he's staying healthy and he's realizing his potential. It's fun to see. First fantasy question. It's a defense question for you from Jesse okay. at Jesco 90. He says he has the Washington defense and he got him under false pretenses. So does he play the uh, Washington football team's D against Atlanta or should he go Colts defense against Miami? I think I like Colts defense against Miami, but it's pretty close. I want to know, though, what are false pretenses? What does that mean? Uh, you know, follow up, Jesse. Let us know. I mean, does that mean like I, I don't even know what a false pretense is when you're acquiring a team like I don't know, uh, but he has them capitalized. He put he put false pretenses all in caps. So I'm not exactly sure what that is, but maybe he'll explain it during the segment so we can try to figure that out. I got to find this out. Yeah, I'm kind of curious, too, how that whole thing works and, and, and what happens. I've never heard of drafting a defense under false pretenses, so yeah. I wouldn't know uh, what, what that's like. Uh, Tom Brady's putting up great numbers. Kyler Murray in Arizona has been a great story, too, early on. Haven't they undefeated and uh, just been such a great fantasy option? Yeah, uh, he, he only had uh, the one rushing touchdown. They actually he didn't have any passing touchdowns last week, but they were moving the ball. That game was a cornucopia of weirdness. Uh, there was the return of the field goal uh the missed field goal for a touchdown there was uh the flea flicker pick six by lawrence i mean you had all sorts of goodies there i mean it was a bizarre play call to call that deep in your own end uh you know jacksonville tight end dropping a pass uh, in the end zone another player drop pass leads to an interception to lawrence lawrence mind you he's still looking terrible yeah. except for that touchdown in the chart which was a dime that was awesome uh, but so you can see the potential, but at the same time, they're, they're just a bad team right now. Listen, Lawrence looks bad, but you want to know something? Uh, Zach Wilson looks worse. Oh, and Jeez. Justin Fields looks worse than that. Yep. Uh, although he had some help in looking worse. Matt Nagy is the guy that probably is like wearing the biggest clown shoes right now. That's true. Um, although um, all the rookies, I mean, you can even say Mac Jones doesn't look very good. Every, every rookie that's playing right now looks uh, pretty awful. Right. We, we, that was the topic of our show today. It's like, why are the, uh, the rookie quarterbacks universally looking terrible? You know, you can't blame Trey Lance. He's not playing. Uh, but is it they're just not ready? Were their routines completely thrown off last year? You know, were we evaluating them wrong because of the shortened college season? These are all questions we have to ask. Now, some rookies are looking at Jamar Chase looks amazing, and he didn't play a down last year. Yeah, that's uh, true. So, and looking, he looked terrible in the preseason is the funny thing. Um, I, I tend to be, I, I tend to think the answer is be patient with these guys. Although Josh Rosen never turned into a thing. Sam Darnold never turned into a thing with Adam Gates. Maybe they're just on bad teams. Maybe there's horrible offensive lines. Like, and I think that's possible. We saw Chicago and Cleveland at sometimes field held onto the ball. That was long, but most of the time he didn't, he just didn't have time. And they just, they weren't utilizing his strengths. He's a guy that prefers to be throwing on the run, get out of pocket. And they try to make him a pocket passer. Yep. Dwayne Haskins, another uh, first round bust. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Uh, there, there's been a few. I mean, and over if we actually uh, during the pandemic, we did a uh, first round bus draft uh, when we, we, we did just for just quarterbacks alone. You could do 20 of them. Easy. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love it. As we continue right now with Jeff Erickson from rotowire.com, we've got some intel from Jesse. Apparently, the reason he said that he uh, was, was uh, you know, drafted Washington under false pretenses was because uh, everyone hyped them up to be pretty stacked all offseason. So as Jesse says, uh, Jeff, he was had when it comes to taking okay. Washington. So those all caps were kind of like the Owen Meany all caps, if you ever read that book. But uh, yes. Yeah, you get it there. Well, you know, Chase Young is pretty awesome. Sweat's pretty awesome, but the rest of the team wasn't so awesome. They played Buffalo, and Buffalo smoked them, and I'm sure – and they, they didn't look good against the Giants either. However, this is a good week to st uh, stream them, I think, against Atlanta. 
I think so too. By the way, if you have any other fantasy advice questions, now is the time to get it in because we've got about five or six minutes with Jeff and then we're going to have to wrap it up. So uh, get in and uh, throw those fantasy questions. And if you get them in, we'll try to uh, relay those uh, to Mr. Erickson before it is too late. Um, it's interesting when I'm looking at your value meter, um, you wonder, Tyree Kill is still fourth on your wide receiver list. Yep. But as teams are trying to take Hill out, how much will that really play into potentially him dropping in your fantasy value meter week after week? And who could benefit the most from that? So four is a drop. I mean, normally he's two, right? Um, I think that throughout his career in the NFL, teams have tried to take him out. Andy Reid's a really creative guy. Eric Bieniemy is going to be pretty creative. I think they find ways to, to free him up. I think he'll be all right. It's just, it's been a little frustrating. You got to have the personnel to do it. You got to have the DBs that are good enough to do that in the first place. And, you you know, as, as Reed and company look at more film, they'll, they'll find ways to be creative, to free him up. I, you can only take away a guy for so long. So I, I just don't see this as a permanent thing, but if it is, then I think Miko Hardman benefits. Uh, obviously Travis Kelsey has been benefiting from this and Clyde Edwards, Alaire. Um, now, I know everybody wants to say Josh Gordon. Maybe. I would throw a minimum bid if you have a deep bench in your league to go at him, but nothing more than that. I don't think you – because you're not going to be able to use him for at least a few weeks. We have no idea what sort of game shape he's in. Uh, he's not. He hasn't had a training camp. He hasn't played – he hasn't done anything in eight years, really. What is the over-under on Josh Gordon finishing out the season with the Kansas City Chiefs? Hmm. Uh, this is why I'm not a bookmaker, but I got to imagine no better than 50% chance. Yeah. I mean, just uh, the odds are against it. There's no doubt about it. Right. Even with the new uh, revised drug policy. From well, it, it's not even that. I don't want to even, I, I just think it's more just what has he got left? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I think it's, that's the bigger issue. I know, but, the, but, uh, but in defense hasn't, hasn't very, very little mileage on him. So you wonder if the speed is still there and the ability is still there. Maybe it all comes back the way it did with and you know Antonio Brown, even though it wasn't seven years for Brown. Yeah, Brown had one year off. I mean, exactly. <laughs> little difference. Big but. difference, actually. Who are some of your favorite plays this week in fantasy? Let's talk about those. All right, sure. Um, I I think you start off on at, at QB. Um, a couple things, a couple plays I like. I I I like Stafford against Arizona. I, I not that Arizona is a bad defense, but I think. They're just so hyper efficient. Some people might be a little afraid of this. I think it's, you go right back to the well with him. Uh, guys that might get a boost. Taylor Heineke is a good streaming candidate. I think this week against Atlanta uh, failing that um, I, I probably would take a look at maybe going with Sam Darnold against Dallas. Although we just talked about Dallas is a better defense than we were giving them credit for. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I'm leaning Heineke as my stream. I hear you. Um, Micah Parsons, do you keep him on the D-line or do you move him back eventually to linebacker? That's a good question. I, I mean, I, it might just be he doesn't fit one category. You know, he is a rusher. You know, you could get the, yeah. the T.J. Watt role you could get. I understand that. Um, are there any running backs you like a lot heading into this week? Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, Chuba Hubbard's obviously the Captain Obvious free agent pick if you haven't run, run waivers yet. He, I don't know how great he will be at the goal line. His vision to me in short yard situations is a little questionable. Speed, athleticism, I'm convinced he's got that. We saw him at Oklahoma State two years ago, 2019. Massive year. Uh, didn't, you know, last year is weird, but uh, I, I think there's potential there. He's, he's the guy you get for the next few weeks. Uh, of guys that you're, you know, uh, other guys that you might be uh, taking a look at this week. Um, Joe Mixon's uh, if for DFS. If you're playing DFS, FanDuel, DraftKings, you're going to play the Thursday night thing. Go ahead and make Joe Mixon your captain against Jacksonville. I love him this week. Uh, if you have him in a standard managed league, you're going to use him anyhow. But this is a great setup for him, higher than usual for him. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Are there any, like, dangerous plays you don't necessarily like this week? Let's go to the, uh, the other end and talk about players to avoid, especially if you've got lineup questions and you're kind of – Weighing the options, yeah. who do you not like this week? Damian Harris, don't like him at all against the Bucks. You just don't run against the Bucks. Um, I, you know, team, it's just not doesn't work. You know, on a per per play basis, it doesn't work. I know New England would love to protect Mac Jones and be able to run the ball. I think they're going to really struggle to do that. So I don't like him that much this uh, this week. I, I think I, if you're looking for a drop, I am out of the Ronald Jones business. As soon as I find someone I want to pick up, I'm going to cut Rojo. 
Uh, I'm fr- I'm just beyond frustrated with them. They, they, they ran the ball nine times last week. Uh, and he's just buried. He's getting half the snap share of Fournette and Gio Bernard too. Uh, they just don't trust him in the passing game at all. He whiffed on that blitz pickup two weeks ago. He's dropped some passes. He, he was thrown a pass and just basically fell after the catch. So you're not getting any after the catch after he makes the catch. So I just think he's saying aura right now. What do you do if you're a uh, James Conner and Chase, uh, Chase Edmonds owner? I mean, it's so difficult because one week, one guy has the bulk of the carries. The other yeah. week, the other guy has. How do you handle that if you're an owner? I mean, they're, they're, they're your flex. They're your second RB in case of emergency guy. Yeah. Uh, Connor's, you know, I, I think a little lower than Edmonds in a PPR, but in a standard, it's the other way around. Okay, good way to look at it. Um, let's talk uh, about uh, what you have right now over at um, rotowire.com. Target breakdown, week yep. three, wide receiver tight end recap, and week four sleepers. That's among the uh, picks. You've got staff picks as well. The DraftKings Sportsbook, surviving week four, your value meter, uh, pickups as well with the NFL waiver wire and Kevin Payne. A lot of football material right now, especially for those listening that have not subscribed and want to check it out. Yeah, backfield breakdown and target breakdown by Jared Donabedian are two invaluable resources there. Try to get you to dig into the corners a little bit more, see the snap share, see the routes run, all that kind of good stuff, where they're getting their snaps. Uh, so you guys can check out those articles and more. Rotowire.com slash free gets you a free 10-day trial. San Fran Sam on our mobile app just asks, is the drop in Robbie Anderson's targets a temporary thing or a legitimate trend? God, I hope it's temporary. Uh, I've got him in too many places. I, I did move him down this week some. He's down to uh, number 34 in my rankings this week. And I think you can make a case for Waddle and Beckham, who I've got the next two below him too. So uh, you could even move him lower if you wanted to. And I wouldn't argue too much. All right. Good job as always, Jeff. Look forward to having you back with us next Wednesday. Thanks for the time. You bet. Thanks, Steve.